वेलकम बैक लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन प्लीज डू सेटल डाउन इट्स अ ग्रेट ऑनर एंड प्रिवलेज टू हैव आर नेक्स्ट स्पीकर फॉर दिस इवनिंग दयानिता सिंह ग्रेजुएटेड फ्रॉम एन आई डी एंड वाइल देर इज प्लेंटी टू से अबाउट हर एंड हर वर्क आई एम गोन रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू वर्ट आई हैव टेकन फ्रॉम वॉट शी हैड रिटर्न इन she is an artist whose medium is photography and the book object is her primary form she builds mobile museums and most recently a pocket museum so with that i will hand over to dayanita thank you good evening i first of all want to congratulate myself for having the audacity to come to an architecture conference and talk about my mobile museums which i have to admit were made entirely with me and my wonderful carpenters without the help of any architect so i'm a great believer of do it yourself architecture um my medium is photography as you may know or not it doesn't matter but the important thing for me is that archi- photography misses architecture um i don't mean the connection between the two mediums which we are all very aware of and i can speak about that a little later because now that i've been photographing architecture i am finding that many architects the ones that we have looked up to and admired for years have built buildings for certain lenses so i go to japan and i look at the buildings and i don't recognize them because i've seen the photos so much but it's all with different lenses and lighting so i'm very happy to announce that photography is not going to die as many people often wonder because architects need photography i seem to think often they make their buildings for photography and i'm sure many of you will be discussing that here but i wanted to restrict my conversation more to an architecture for photography because i am very tired of the exhibition with the print on the wall the way that has become quite normal for showing photography and which earlier on in my career i had to do um the most obvious form the most obvious architecture for photography the most um how shall i say conducive to appreciating a photograph is the book um it's something you hold in your hands you determine the structure but then when you're looking at it you're reading it you determine the pace and the photographer has made their sequence or the photographers who think about books have made the sequence so it's the best way to really appreciate a photograph is in the book form initially maybe you could say it's the print in your hand but close second or the next step is really the book i however got interested in the book object and the mobile museum leading to the pocket museum and this is what i'm going to have my conversation with you about monologue really um i work with contact sheets i work with a medium format camera or till last year i did and i work with contact sheets and therefore i am very used to seeing 12 images at one time i often travel with little portlies of images because one never knows in which hotel room one feels inspired to make a book for your friends children or someone's anniversary so i always have these little prints with me in little boxes often they are my medium format contact sheets cut up and i'm sure everyone in this audience is of the vintage that knows what a contact sheet is but just for the younger ones that's a contact sheet 12 frames printed together now that i work with digital interestingly i still make contact sheets of the work because i find it a very useful form with which to look at my photographs so i make books of all my digital prints as well this 
this is another way that I travel. I buy these boxes which are meant for butterflies or coins or stamps and put little prints in them. Because like I said, you never know where you get inspired and for which friend you want to make a book and you might want to suddenly put some prints together. Out of that kind of cutting up the prints and traveling with them came the idea of these making letters for friends by pasting photographs. I have had the good fortune of traveling with some wonderful minds, but some of them very literary minds. So they're not quite the kind of people you can sort of say, thank you, that was a wonderful travel together. And so I thought, let me make books for them with my little um, contact prints. And finally, I made such a book for my publisher, Gerhard Steidel, when he came to I'm seeing something else and something else is there. Okay, let me then not look at this. So I found these black moleskin books into which I would paste my contact sheets, cut up contact sheets, and I would uh, make two copies, give one to a friend and keep one for myself. To the friend with the idea that they could travel with it, and who knows if whether on a train or a plane or a hotel room, they wanted to have an exhibition of my work, then they could. Luckily, I made a second set for myself, because then when I gave one to my publisher, Steidel, he wanted to publish them. And so I went, this is Steidelville in Göttingen. It is uh, the most important place on earth for me. He's the most important man in my life. Um, every year we make some collaboration, which can really push the limits of what the book can be. So we made this box called sent a letter, sent a letter to my friend on the way he dropped it. Someone came and picked it up and put it in his pocket. We all know that rhyme. This was just to allude to the idea that the letter was not really meant for you, that it was meant for someone else. And this is how it panned out. And then I started to tell every organization if they wanted my work, they would have to show my sent a letter. And this was at the AL Photo Festival, where they told me, Dianita, we show prints, we don't show books on the wall. And I said, that's exactly what I want. I want my book to be on the wall. I want the book to be the exhibition. I want the book to be the work. You see, in exhibitions, I always felt that the exhibition was a catalog of my book. That the book was the real work. Are you with me on that? The exhibition became the catalog for me, because the book was at the heart of my work. And therefore, it was very important for me to show the book. But all galleries and curators told me, Dainita, a book is a book, and an exhibition is an exhibition. Don't try and marry the two. And that's what gave me the idea. And I said, I am going to marry the two. I'm going to make sure one day my book hangs on the museum walls, along with you know, the Richard Serras and everybody else. And I came, I've come quite close to it. So this is at the AL Photo Festival, where I insisted and got my center letter displayed. Um, again, at the AL Festival. This is at the Ganges View Hotel, where Shashank Bhai always says, bring some work, we'll do a projection, kuch kaam dikhayenge. So now I have this little box that I can travel with. It has seven little books in it that become seven little exhibitions. We laid them out on all the tables in the hotel, and two of them got stolen, which pleased me no end. But also at the National Gallery of Modern Art, while everybody showed their prints, I insisted, insisted that I could only be there if I showed my books. Um, so here they are displayed at the National Gallery of Modern Art in Bombay. Uh, this is displayed at the Umiya Museum in Sweden. It's like, get me, get my books. You can't have an exhibition of my work without my books. Nobody wanted them, nobody was particularly interested in the book becoming the work, but for me it was really important. Um, Marc Frey Foundation in Madrid, the Winterthur Photo Museum where the curator designed this beautiful vitrine for my center letter. So you see how the book becomes an exhibition because of the architecture of the book itself and then the architecture that's built around it. Finally, this was my highlight of 
the last decade, more than the last decade. January 2008, I was going for the what you do in Calcutta to go to the Fleury's restaurant to have a coffee and cake. And on the way, I passed this jewelry store, Satram Das Jewelers, and the vitrines were empty. Beautiful, beautiful vitrines. So I went inside and asked to meet the owner, and they said, do you know him? I said, no, but we are, I'm about to get to know him. And I introduced myself to Raj, and he said, oh my God, Dainita Singh, I'm a fan of your work. What can I do for you? And I said, it's very easy. If you really want to do something for me, give me your vitrines, because I have this box. And he said, our jewelry is too expensive to put on the footpath on Park Street. So by all means, have the vitrines. So January 2008, with my friend Adam Fuss, whose reflection you can see in the window, I placed my books. I just removed them January 2018. This, I think, has been my most successful exhibition, certainly the longest running, 10 years on Park Street. Who needs a museum? Who needs a gallery? Who needs a publisher even, when you're on the footpath in Calcutta? But then, of course, the National Museum asked if I would do something, and I had this great opportunity to put my vitrines that I had made with my carpenters with center letter on the walls along with their, what they call the reject statues on the top floor. Like any opportunity to put uh, center letter in. And then I made a book called Museum of Chance. This was a book made with 88 different covers. I made a special edition, made a special structure so it could hang on a wall. And it was sold as my real first book object. It was an edition, it was a regular book out of which I made an edition, which in the art world becomes quite important. And so therefore, I think I found 352, 352 new collectors because I think there were a lot of people who bought the book object who wouldn't necessarily buy art, but and young students, young couples, it was very satisfying for me. But it's never enough, and then I made an accordion out of these books too, and I made bags that you could carry the books in, so that as soon as you bought it at the art fair, you could take your flight to New York or Japan, and you could be carrying my exhibition with you. So the thing on the table, um, is the accordion fold of Museum of Chance. And then I developed these suitcases for it. My friend Bobby went away and didn't wait for my talk. Um, but he makes these wonderful suitcases for my work. And with the idea that now the books could really travel with me on a flight. And on business class, you can have five suitcases. So I could actually carry four suitcases with me. Um, this is another project I made last year called Kochi Box with 30 image cards. This is again offset printed. So the box could become a full exhibition. I'm obsessed with the idea of the book becoming the exhibition of actually making all the display myself, the structure myself, but also selling it myself and filling my pockets with the money that I get from the books. And then I make gold bangles with each such collection. And my gallerist laughs at me because what I collect after a month of selling books is a fraction of what my work would cost. I don't know how to explain it, but even today I was at the art fair where they were selling the pocket museum. And there was a huge print of mine in a gallery, and that was fine, and it was nice. But my heart was really in that take on art edition uh, Space where I was selling these uh, pocket museums, which I'll come to. So this is the Kochi box, another one of my book objects. This is also how I travel with these little structures, because now I was starting to think that could my books actually get on steroids? Could they, could they enlarge? Could they grow? Could they become my mobile museums? And the, these are sort of the dummies for them, again, traveling with lots of hotel rooms and finding out different ways to make the hinges work and different combinations of, uh, you'll see. So then I made Museum Bhavan.
Um, Museum Bhavan is a traveling family of museums. I can't read what's written there, so if you like, you can keep reading that. Um, the idea being that they can expand and contract within the exhibition space. You see, when you work as an artist in museums, you're not allowed to touch your work, and you can't make changes in your work, especially in the museums. And that always annoyed me, because I thought, I, want, I wanted something organic. I wanted to be able to change my work during the exhibition. I wanted to bring in images, I wanted to take away images, but galleries and museums never allowed me that. And that's why I made these museums. And I made them with the idea that they would all fit into my house, so nothing could be higher than eight feet so that the, they could go through my front door. And I thought my house would become the Museum Bhavan. Um, then the museums started to have little structures inside them because I thought, well, it's fine to have this freestanding structure in the middle of a room, but what if I suddenly wanted to create another museum? What if I wanted to build a museum during the display? Because all the museums are very, very fertile. They have many other museums inside them. So I made these wooden boxes uh, that go fit inside the museum. So I made the structure such that you can open and close, change the images at will in a second. So if I can stand at the back and keep pulling images out, changing the images, because they have a reserve collection and they have, a, of course, a display collection. But then the boxes allowed me to build museums out of my museums. Um, to the left, is File Museum, and to the right is the Little Ladies Museum. Uh, File Museum and Little Ladies Museum are sibling museums, so therefore they're also made of the same size because they can be interchanged. So that's the display at the Kiran Nadar Museum. And I could go in every day and rearrange, because now people realize that this work has to keep shifting, that you cannot hold it to the wall. That was very important to me, to take photography off the wall, to not have it sort of fossilized on the wall. I always felt that my work died in a certain way when it was screwed into the wall. So that's the inside of the museums. I work with wonderful carpenters who worked with Taru, so I'm sure many of you can appreciate the beautiful linseed oil finish. Um, but also, we didn't have any drawings. The interesting thing was, like in school, it was, here's the problem. I want my images not to be on the wall. I want my images to be freestanding, and I want to be able to change them. And we made many, many structures and destroyed them till we finally found things where everything worked. I also started to like very much the inside of the museums. And then I could interchange between the museums. So now I don't know if you can tell, but there is something from Little Ladies, the famous girl on the bed, that goes into the file museum. But literally, while you're standing there, while I'm talking to people, I could keep making these changes. The Little Ladies Museum is of particular interest because it also combines my mother's photographs. If you look at the central panel, that's me, and that's 50 years of my life, from six months to age 50. And that's me with my beloved Mona Ahmed, who I photographed since 1989. I have very long, long relationships with people that I photograph. That's still the Little Ladies Museum. And now I built this sort of, you can't tell here, but I use the museums to create little conversation chambers. I mean, you're all architects, so you can imagine 
that you sort of, it's closed. So it's closed, it's like this. And then I can open one side, then I can open the other side. So it's really like a hardback book that I can open and close in different ways, apart from uh, shifting the images. So Museum of Furniture and Museum of Photography are cousin museums. And they were also quite replaceable. But while I was talking to a friend about the Furniture Museum, I suddenly realized that in it was a Corbusier Museum. And then he corrected me and said, it's not Corbusier's chairs, but it's so Jean Genere's, I can never pronounce the names, chairs. And so within the museums, different people find other museums. Another person came and found a museum of flaws in them. So I would open, there's tools also inside the museum. There are tables also inside the museum. The problem with shipping, with being an artist, is really shipping because the crates become so heavy and expensive and people would never agree that they would... Nobody agreed to ship my benches and tables along with my work. So, what did I do? I found a way to sneak them into the museums. So the museums don't even realize that my museums come with their own tables and stools which work really well because people have a chance to sit down and think about the work or whatever they want to think about. And this particular one became like a photo chamber where people would come and do uh, portraits, actually, not selfies. So that's still Museum of Furniture, but what's interesting is on the wall you see Museum of Vitrines. And that's those little boxes that I was talking to you about. So I could then... During the installation at the Hayward Gallery, I found I had this museum of vitrines within the museum of furniture. And the curator said, Dayanita, we can't at the last minute add another museum. And I said, sure we can, because she hadn't realized these boxes could go on the wall. And so we did indeed, for the opening, have an extra museum, because I felt a museum had been born at that time. I couldn't put it back into its parent museum. That's the Museum of Photography that I had made because I, am, I get quite bored with the idea of these nationality-based photography shows or art shows for that matter. And I thought there is no such thing as Indian photography. It's not like the Dusseldorf School or the Provoke School from Japan. So I thought I will make my own Museum of Photography since I'm always complaining about the photography shows. And my Museum of Photography was about how we live with photography. And there I think there's a great PhD waiting to be done because there is a certain special way in which we engage with photographs in this part of the world, in how we live with them and how we celebrate them. This is the Museum of Machines that I turned into by opening it in a different way, turned it into a confession chamber and you could actually make an appointment to come and do confession inside the Museum of Machines. This was a different form that developed for Museum of Machines, which is more like a pillar, and then there are the wings on the side that open out. And then I started to appreciate the architecture, the, the base architecture. So I started to remove images from some of the boxes and put the empty boxes on the wall. And the curator couldn't say anything to me because it was part of my work. That I enjoyed very much. It was like taking the autonomy back for my work. And that's why I think I also like the book so much, because I have the autonomy of my work there and not a curator or a gallerist. So that's the Museum of Printing Presses. These are boxes that have three images inside them. So every day, you, anyone, not just me, but any of the curators could change the images in, the fr in front. So at any time, because if you have five boxes with three images inside, you have... 15 different combinations possible. And I was fascinated by the idea that every day there could be a new combination on the wall. And the work doesn't get stale. 
And finally, I made my Museum of Chance, which is my mother museum. I'll run through it quickly. It's two pillars that open and open. And this was like a selection made from 30 years of my work because it was really about the idea of chance. And that's the Museum of Chance. And then I invited different people to make museums out of it. And this is Shane, my friend, made the Museum of Erotics out of the Museum of Chance. And then when it came to removing the images, I realized actually this is the show I would have liked to do without any of the photographs, but just the structures. I still hope to do that show. I had hoped to do that show, but unfortunately all the museums started to be collected by other museums. And that's when I had to make my own pocket museum because while I was very happy that MoMA had bought the Museum of Chance, um, I hadn't had the possibility to share my work with all my friends and dissemination is a big part of photography and I thought I can't let it end here, I can't let my museums go into other museums. So I decided to make my pocket museum. So what I did was, I made a selection of all the images in the different museums. And I made these boxes and made their miniature version in here. So I could make these museums, I actually put them in the Satram Das jeweler's shop this January, that's why I removed center letter. So this became Pocket Museum. And so when you buy this box, and each of the covers of the boxes is different. So we made 3,000 different boxes in India and shipped them to Germany, where they were filled with, by Steidl with the nine books inside. This is because I wanted to really tease that connection between mass-produced and unique. It was important for me to be able to make a mass-produced object. These are mass-produced, but unique. So now what do you say? Is it a book? Is it a book object? Is it an artwork? Is it unique? Is it mass-produced? And that makes quite a difference to how it is acquired and priced. But it's actually just the same as any book. It is 75 euros. And for that, you get the nine museums. And since all of you are architects, I would urge you to buy this book wherever you can find it, preferably at an event where you choose your own cover, because then you acquire it differently. And build structures for it. I haven't yet, none of my architect friends have built me a structure as yet for this. And I think this work is begging for different kinds of structures to be made. And then, of course, I. I never, I'm never satisfied, and it's never enough for me. So I decided, actually, I don't even want the boxes now, but I actually want to just wear all my museums so that at any time I can just walk into, on a flight. You know, who knows where one might want to have an exhibition? And I can't always be carrying my boxes around. So my friend... Anita Rora, I have very indulgent friends, as you can tell. Uh, help me make this jacket with nine pockets. And at the back is the line that says, my life as a museum. Because now I am the museum. Thank you very much. Oh, I couldn't reach it. So that side is for the display. Because you see, you have to be able to display the work also. But I'm really hoping that I'll see on Instagram some wonderful structures made by the new architect friends who are going to acquire my museum of my pocket museum.